Hello, yes, I'm back. And I want to start doing a series of videos which deal solely with the evidence that supports the fact that we live on a spherical Earth. Um, you could argue with flat earthers from now until the end of time about all their bad arguments. It won't make any difference. And it doesn't matter how many times you put out all the fires that they start on the internet. The next day someone starts the same fire again. And it's just a complete waste of time. Now, I'm going to place certain restrictions on the evidence that I'm going to use. Basically, I'm only going to use evidence that could be checked from the ground by anybody. Because as we all know, flat earthers have given themselves absolute carte blanche to deny 50 years worth of images and footage from space and the existence of all satellites. Yes, I know, it's breathtaking arrogance. But that's flat earthers for you. But when you start going into the evidence that's ground-based, suddenly they throw up all kinds of problems against that. Well, why is it so convoluted? Why isn't it? Shouldn't it be easy to show that the Earth is a sphere? Well, yes, it is. You just look up some videos online that show you it from space, but you won't accept that. Um, and no matter what evidence you provide them with, they'll just set the bar a little bit higher, you know, They'll say, oh, why don't they turn the camera around 360 when they're doing a spacewalk? Well, if they did that, you would say that that was fake anyway. So, you know, it's a waste of time dealing with them and their lies and their nonsense and their arrogance and their stupidity. So it's best just to get on with the evidence, the ground-based evidence. Now, generally flat earthers have got I've noticed three main ways of responding to evidence that supports a spherical earth, things they don't like. The first thing they do is they just completely ignore it. The next thing they do is they become all sceptical and start saying things that they think intelligent, sceptical people say and start talking about burdens of proof and you're the one making the assertion. And... They'll be sceptical about things for which there is absolutely zero good reason to be sceptical about, like say the 24 hour sun in Antarctica, which is well documented both scientifically and anecdotally and is witnessed by literally tens of thousands of people every year. But no, it doesn't happen according to flat earthers. On the other hand, one man, Admiral, Admiral Byrd, can go to Antarctica and come back with all kinds of fantastical tales and his words apparently are solid gold truth, according to flat earthers. So they just show themselves up for the fake, ridiculous, laughable, sad, stupid, dishonest, ridiculous, stupid people that they really are. Sorry, I probably repeated myself there, but it has to be said. Um, now, if they get past the stage of the, oh, I'm sceptical about this information, the next stage they go into when they can't deny the evidence anymore is what I call their um, half-baked ad hoc excuses phase. You know, we've all heard it, oh, it's perspective and blah, 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 any old rubbish, any nonsense at all, anything from perspective to bending light to swelling water to etheric whirlpools in space, whatever they are, I've heard them all, it's all the same rubbish. Um... Astonishingly, though, this new breed of flat earthers, spearheaded by our good friend Dell from Paisley, have come up with a whole new way of dealing with evidence, which is to just, which is to just simply reject it as irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It doesn't count. It's a red herring argument. Without addressing the information, the evidence, or the argument in any way at all, it just isn't relevant, so we don't have to deal with it. We don't even have to show that we understand it. And Dell has shown consistently that he has not got a clue what he's talking about. He doesn't even understand the relevant issues. And all of his cohorts don't. This uh, new cult of Dell 
you know, there's been several sort of subcults within Flat Earth. There's been the Potato People, the Eric Dubé People, the Mark Sargent People. Now there's the Dell People. It's the cult of Dell. But anyway, I digress. Let's start. Let's get on with the evidence. Enough of Flat Earthers. Well, what is the evidence? Well, the first evidence is direct evidence of curvature. And I showed this two years ago. I made this video two years ago. I stood um, here at Brotty Ferry Castle, looking up the Tay, you can I showed the, the the road bridge and then the rail bridge, and then in the distance there were some trees that happened to be there, which was fortunate because you can use them as a point of reference. <coughs> now, I took two shots, one shot at about four feet above sea level, and one at about forty feet above sea level, and as you would expect on a spherical Earth. The one at 40 feet above sea level shows the horizon much, much further away. The one at four feet shows it exactly where you'd expect it to be, maybe two or three miles from where I was. So um, here was the original video where I, I compared those shots of the bridge and show that yes, indeed, at just four feet above sea level, there's a horizon there and when you go to 40 feet above sea level, you can see all of the bridge. Now, I also made this video where I zoomed in. I did zoom in digitally just to enhance, to make a direct comparison. And as I've pointed out in a video before, what's really interesting here is that the trees in the background um, are obscured by about 30 feet worth in the lower down shot. Um, if you look at the higher shot, this is at about 40 feet, you can see all of these trees. And if you see this shape here, as I, I move over a little bit, as I drop down to four feet, that shape moves over to there, and suddenly about 30 feet of it is obscured, exactly as would be expected. So there is direct evidence of curvature. The lower down you go, the closer the horizon is, and things start to be obscured by it. And the further away things are, the more obscured they are. And if you look at the bridge, only a small amount is obscured. You look at the trees about another further five miles away, and a huge amount of them are obscured, exactly as you would expect. Now let's think about how much curvature you would see um, looking directly. Oops along this line. So this is about 10 miles long. Well, let's have a look at how curved a line 10 miles long would be on the surface of the Earth. Well, here it is. I'll zoom out. You can see this is a circle, a radius of 3,960 units. Zoom in, and there is a line 10 units long. So this would represent 10 miles. There's your perfectly straight line. There's your curved line. I've shown all this before. That's how curved it would look. Now remember, this is um, over half a million feet. And I'm only about 4 or 40 feet above it. So you couldn't even represent how far above it I would be on this diagram. It's impossible. You can't represent the curvature. It's too slight. It's tiny, but it is there. And if you're that close to it, this line and looking along it, it would start to obscure things. So you wouldn't expect to see it directly. You would expect to see it obscuring things. And that's exactly what you see in this video here. Okay, as I did two years ago. You can see all of the trees. Suddenly they're obscured when you go lower down. Also... As I've shown before, there's Toronto from across Lake Ontario, sunk below the horizon, clearly sunk very well below the horizon. You can see lots of photographs like this online. Just Google, go to Google Images. Um, here's Chicago from across Lake Michigan. Again, it's sunk below the horizon. Okay, so... This is my main evidence for this video, direct evidence of curvature. 
when you look at things across water, when they're far enough away, they sink below horizon. Okay? And how much they've sunk below the horizon depends on your height. Now, I've demonstrated that, and you can check it for yourself. Anybody could check this for themselves. If you can find a stretch of water where you can see something in the distance, um, video it or take a picture of it at different heights, at different distances, see it for yourself. Okay, To use one of the Flat Earthers' favourite sayings, do your own research, you can see this for yourself, and no, it's not perspective. I remember the first day I put this video up, within minutes, there was morons online saying that it was perspective, and look, just a few days ago, wow, you just witnessed perspective, another total lying moron online who thinks that perspective can make things look like they're behind other things, okay? If you think that, you're either a liar or an idiot. Perspective cannot make something look like it is behind something else. It just makes things bigger and smaller. That's all. And once something's behind the horizon, the strongest telescope in the world will not bring it back into view. People who say that they can, you can do that, are liars. They've never demonstrated it. There's no reason to believe it's possible. And if you go to higher ground, suddenly you can see something again that was previously obscured. Everything that is consistent with a spherical Earth not consistent in any way, shape or form with a flat earth. If you were looking across a flat plane, you would not expect things to start looking like they were sinking below a horizon. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, there's nothing in our understanding of perspective or optics or even common sense that would suggest that. It's utter nonsense, okay? Things sink below the horizon because there is curvature. Now, I thought I'd just finish this video off with a couple of other little videos that I made myself. Now, here is a nice video that shows the sun well above the clouds, so it's quite high in the sky. And you can see that the clouds are all dark on their underside. They're dark underneath and light on top. They're being lit from above. They're dark underneath and they're light on top. That's when the, the sun is high in the sky. Now let's look at another video I made where the sun was setting and the clouds are being lit from underneath. Now these are at two completely different locations and at different times, but you can see either of these phenomena for yourself, okay? We've all seen a sunset, we've all seen the clouds being lit from underneath, We've all seen the, the sun high in the sky and saw the clouds dark underneath, okay? Now, what's even more interesting about this, I don't think you can see it quite as clearly in the video, but I took a still shot, okay? Now, you can see in this image that these clouds here actually cast a shadow on the underside of those clouds there, okay? A cloud actually casting a shadow on the underside of another cloud indicates that the sun is setting. Now, whatever you may think, you may have some bizarre way of getting around this in your twisted imagination if you're a flat earther, but there is no way the sun is about three or four thousand miles above a flat earth and following some kind of path 
like a circle around the North Pole. There is no evidence to back that up. It's a ridiculous idea, so please drop it. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of flat earthers have been quietly dropping it. And, you know, the cult of Dell are refusing to endorse any model and they think that makes them honest. It doesn't. It's because there isn't a model. It's because there is no way of explaining the observations that we see with respect to the sun. And I'll be going on to make more videos about that. So that's the end of the first video, giving evidence for a spherical Earth. Basically, direct evidence of curvature. Because when you sail away from things, they sink below the horizon.